All right, class, today we're going to cover uh, AED bystander with CPR in progress. This is going to be quick with no um, equipment or materials. I just want to get this turned around so you can listen to it since the testing is coming up on Saturday. So when you take a look at the skill sheet, you have the candidate information, date, start time, examiner, signature, end time. All that will be filled out by the instructor. Then you have the performance objective. This is a little bit different than the AHA version of it, so keep that in mind. The personal protective equipment that you're going to get, gloves, eye protection, gown, all of that will be provided for you except for the eye protection. Make sure you bring your own eye protection. And the equipment, the AED, CPR mannequin, bag valve mask, OPA with various sizes, and O2 tank with regulators. So that's going to be a little bit different from your AHA. You did not have the OPA or O2 tank with regulator for the AHA version of it. So let's take a look at the indications unresponsive, pulseless, apneic, or agonal. Make sure you understand what each of those means. Unresponsive, of course, you do CAB, which would determine if the person is pulseless, uh, meaning there's no heartbeat. Apneic, person is not breathing, or agonal, which is not normal breathing, it's just gasping. Contraindications, obvious signs of death like decapitation, or a valid DNR, or pulsed order. So that would be the contraindications. So now let's take a look at the scoring, standard scoring, 0, 1, 2, 0 is unsuccessful, or you hit a critical criteria, 1, not yet competent, we had to prompt you, and you were able to do it, and 2 is if you're successfully competent with no prompting. So now let's take a look at the steps, BSI, PBE, Penman, no surprise there, uh, obtain Brief history, including events leading up to the arrest and downtime. So you're showing up as an EMS responder and bystander CPR is already in progress. So you're going to try to obtain a brief history, including the leading events leading up to. Just ask questions, what happened, what's going on. Then you have to assess for the effectiveness of the CPR in progress. So is the bystander performing proper CPR, right? If the bystander is not performing proper CPR, you're gonna stop them from doing CPR, and then you're going to reassess yourself, assess for responsiveness. You're gonna kneel down and say, hey, sir, are you okay, are you okay? Not responding, check for a pulse and breathing, not more than 10 seconds. Uh, if there's no pulse and no breathing or apneic or agonal breathing, you're gonna start CPR. That's step number four there. And number five, let's flip over. There's no pulse, immediately begins quali high quality CPR until the AED arrives. So you are going to start compressions. Remember your hand placement, where's the hand placement? Center of the chest, lower half of the breastbone, right? Make sure you understand where the hand placement is. There's gonna be no prompting. If you start CPR and your hand placement's incorrect, that's gonna be a fail. Make sure you know that. Uh, Adequate rate, 100 to 120 compressions per minute. We will be using a metronome to make sure you're within that range. So get a metronome. I'll see if I can pull one up here. It's free on the App Store. I have one downloaded called Metronome, and I have it set for 110 beats per minute. And you can see it helps you determine. And conversely, as you're doing CPR, if I tap on this while you're doing CPR, one, two, three, four, five. You see the top portion there? It says 108, 109 beats per minute, top left corner there. That's how we're gonna determine if you're hitting that uh, 100 to 120 beats per minute. So download one of these free metronomes, get used to that beat, so you can do CPR at the correct rate, okay? Adequate depth, at least two inches. Remember on these mannequins, if it's flashing yellow, you're doing it too fast. If it's red or flashing red, you're not compressing deep enough. If there's no light, you're just not triggering it. So you're not going deep enough at all. Your goal is to have two green lights, which means you're going deep enough and at the correct rate. That's what the two green mean. Okay, so keep an eye on that, the light on the mannequin. And then you do correct compressions to ventilation ratio 30 to two. After your 30 compressions, you do two breaths. You gotta put the pocket mask on the face, head tilt, chin lift, and simulate Breath one, pause for one second, breath two. You allow for full chest recoil, minimum interruptions, no less than 10 seconds throughout. The AED will arrive with the second rescuer. The second rescuer takeover compression, so now you are going to operate the AED. Don't forget the steps. 
First step is to turn on the AED. So you open up the case, turn on the AED. It's gonna prompt you to attach the pads. Look at the pads, there are pictures on the pads. So you place the pads in the correct location. One goes to the upper right, one goes to the lower left. Plug in the connector to the AED. You don't have to do that. Our AEDs are already connected. Once you place the pads onto the mannequin, you press it down and then it's gonna tell you uh, what to do next. The AED, we will most likely have it set to deliver a shock. So it's gonna tell you analyzing, stay clear of the patient. At this point, you have to clear the patient, clear analyzing. Once it says shock advised, charging, that's when you start CPR again. The next time you clear the patient is when the red light flashes and says deliver shock now. That's when you clear, deliver the shock, and right after you deliver the shock, you resume compressions immediately. So you have to tell your partner, start CPR immediately. And that's when you place the OPA into the patient, connect the bag valve mass to the oxygen source, 15 to 25 liters, and start bagging the patient. If your partner reaches 30 compressions before you do all that, what's he gonna do? Pocket mask, right? He's still a single rescuer until you can get that BVM attached to the O2 source. Place that OPA into the mannequin, attach the BVM to the O2 source, turn it to 15 to 25 liters, and then bag mask uh, the patient when it's 30 compressions. Uh, after two minutes, the AED will reanalyze. When it says reanalyze, the person on the airway, which is you, the person testing, will need to say, stop analyzing, stop CPR, clear the personnel and bystanders, and it will tell you whether to defibrillate or not. And once you defibrillate or not, you immediately start high quality CPR, and then you prepare the patient for transport. And that's 30 points, 30 points. So take a look at the critical criteria points. Uh, make sure you understand if you hit any of these critical criteria points down here, it's an immediate fail. Uh, so take a look at it. 80% is 24 points. Remember, if we have to prompt you or remind you, you're gonna miss points. If you just don't know it, uh, you're gonna get zero points. So you wanna capture all those points. All right, uh, any questions, uh, you can post it in uh, Discord or email either instructor, science or myself, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.